Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Jack the Mind Sculptor. I would go over my pre-release, so let's just say I did pretty well, but uh, I'll save that for another video. This one, as you can guess from the title, is about opening up a booster box of Magic 2013 Core Set. So let's go ahead and once again get right to it. Uh, you might notice that my setup is slightly different this time. I did get a camcorder instead of a webcam, so hopefully that makes this video slightly more tolerable. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up this baby. But yeah, so uh, yeah, a lot of things to think about uh, strategy-wise that I'll go over in my pre-release review, I guess. But for now, let's go ahead and enjoy this box opening. Alright. Got the little insert at the top here, and let's position this box just off to the back. You can still see it's there. And let's go ahead and go over our cards. Alright, first booster box, or booster pack, sorry, with Lilian on it. And we'll get cracking. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and make sure you guys can definitely see all of these cards. Use this awesome zoom function. Alright, so for this pack, the back is just a swamp. The add card. And for our first rare of this pack, oh, Dragon Skull Summit. Not very exciting, but dual lands are always welcome. Ooh, we do get a nice Vampire Nighthawk in the uncommon slot. Alright, set that pack aside. Let's go ahead and open up the next pack. Alright, we've got a Trumpet Blast in the front. And in the back we have... Planes. We could skip this card. And then for our next rare, a Queer on Dryad. Uh, one of the reprints from the set. A decent little body and limited, but not too exciting otherwise. And here are a flash of the uncommons. But I mean, uh, M13 uh, value wise is not that great. There are a lot of reprints, uh, not too many new chase cards. The, of course, the, the main chase cards right now are the new Ajani. And then the, the Thunder Maul Hellkite. So I'd be happy to open any of those. I'd even be happy to open up a trading post. Alright, for our third pack, we have Forest in the back, add card. And then for the big reveal, Ground Seal. This card is pretty terrible. <laughs> it's a, a sideboard card in certain matchups, but not too exciting otherwise. Go ahead and set those cards aside. So, uh, not too exciting so far, but I didn't expect uh, Core Set 2013 to be that exciting either. Like I said, um, they're really trying to tone down the power of this set in general. Uh, they don't want any more like, Titans and stuff like that, so... Pretty low in power. But Alright, so for this pack, the back is... Ooh, nice, a shiny Archaeomancer. I actually really like this guy in Limited. He's a 1-2 for 4 mana that brings back a sorcery or instant card from the graveyard. Not too shabby. Put that in our foil pile. And then we have an island, of course, and a token. And then for our rare, Boundless Realms, the epic ramp spell. So this card is probably EDH only. <laughs> and, you know, not too exciting. Here's some other cards. Knight of Glory is actually pretty good in a limited. Always happy to see him in my pool. Sorry, I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit. I'm getting way too up close and personal there with the cards. You guys probably want to see like the whole cards anyway. Alright, let's go ahead and open up this next booster. Okay, so... Ox in the front and in the back, a foil Phyrexian Hulk. This guy is, you know, a decent 5-4 beater unlimited. 
but yeah, not something you're looking to pull when opening packs. All right, and the back card is Cathedral of War. Nice. This is the new land that comes in play tap and taps for colorless mana, but it has Exalted. So uh, yeah, this card was actually pretty awesome and limited. I got it in my pool on Saturday. And actually, you might see some uh, constructed play too. So we'll see where that card turns up. Oh, and for the uncommons, go ahead and show you guys these uh, Reliquary Tower, Ring of Valkus, and Healer of the Pride. Reliquary Tower is another reprint uh, that a lot of EDH players look for. Alright, let's go ahead and open up this next pack. Alright, the back card is just the planes. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those two cards. And for the big reveal, redirect. Well, another reprint from, uh, this was also in N12. Nice little trick in limited, not too exciting otherwise. Here are the uncommons. Yeah, nothing very exciting so far. I also didn't open any planeswalkers or anything during my sealed pools, but it's okay. You don't need planeswalkers to win, though they are very nice in general. Alright, so for this pack, in the back we have just an island. So we'll get rid of the island and the add card. And then for our rare, we have... Ooh, nice! Vampire Nocturnus. This guy is a reprint, but he is actually a pretty awesome mythic. You know, he's a mono black vampires. Might be a deck, might not, but this is definitely a cool guy. He's actually uh, one of the few mythics worth money, I believe. And let's go ahead and flash you guys the uncommons real quick. Alright, so not too shabby for our first mythic. Go ahead and open up the next pack. Alright, and in the back we have just a swamp. So I'll go ahead and remove the swamp and the goblin token. And then for our rare, Drowned Catacombs. Alright, more dual lands. Yeah, this is actually one of the more sought after dual lands, but still just a dual land reprint from a core set. There's the uncommons. Yeah, oh, and that's the other thing about core sets too, because uh, you know there's a lot of dual lands in the red rare slot. Uh, dual lands are always nice to have, you know they're always good value, but not very exciting to open up, you know, because it's not like you open up a dual land, and you're like, oh, that needs to go in my my deck. All right, for this one, the back is a forest and an ad card, and then for our rare, we have reverberate. <laughs> All right. The, the red cousin of Redirect. And for our uncommons, Karen Fear, Sarah Angel, and Crimson Muckwaller. Alright. Still hoping for an Ajani here. Ajani, by the way, in addition to being uh, worth a lot of money, he is amazing and limited. Ajani, like, destroyed me in a game. Alright, Mountain and a Beast Token. And then for the rare we have... Gilded Lotus. That's actually not too shabby. This is a great and awesome card for EDH. Um, Got to lower in price now, now that's reprinted. But this is great for newer players who want to get into EDH. They don't have to spend too much money on it. And then for the Uncommons, we got these three. All right, next pack coming right up. Uh, I'm not the cleanest at tearing open packs. All right, we've got a Servant of Nephrox here, and in the back, just the planes. Oh, no peeking. Gone token, and then for our rare, it's Elvish Archdruid. All right, another reprint. This guy was also an M12. Nice if you're looking to do some like elf decks, of course. Generate a lot of mana. Alright, and this is the last pack in the row on the left, for those keeping track. And it's a stubborn one. 
I'm not doing this on purpose. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Finally got it out. Alright. Line on the front. And a foil planes in the back. Alright. So we'll take those. Ooh, we also get a nice uh, Drake token for uh, Tauren's invocation. Or Tauren himself, of course. And then for our rare, we have Intrepid Hero. Okay, this guy is pretty cool and limited, but you know, not really looking for him otherwise. Beast Tracker, Augur of Bolas. People have also been talking about Augur of Bolas. Think he might see play in a couple of decks. Alright, so this will be our first pack of the middle column of this booster box. Oh, I think these packs are getting harder to open as we go on. Alright. In the back we have just a mountain and an ad card. And then for our big reveal we have... Ooh, Omniscience. <laughs> this is a mythic. Um, probably not playable in any format except maybe EDH. <laughs> when you put this on the field you'll be able to cast anything in your hand for free. And that's a pretty, you know, huge effect. I actually don't mind having one. I might put it into a blue EDH deck just for fun. Alright. And here are the uncommons. Alright, next up. Another Archaeomancer in the front. And in the back we have just a planes and a beast token. Ooh, and then for our rear, it's Chandra the Firebrand. Nice. So she is a reprint, but Planeswalkers are always awesome. Uh, a lot of people try to break her during the Scars of Mirrodin block by using a Proliferate. You know, but maybe uh, maybe some new stuff will pop up with her once Return to Ravnica comes out. Yeah, Planeswalkers are always awesome. Though, of course, you know, everyone's always searching for the newer Planeswalkers, just because new is hot. Reprints, not so hot. Man, more Entrancers in the front. Seems like we have, like, nothing but Entrancers. Would, would make for a nice uh, mill deck in Limited. We've got Planes in the back and Goblin. And for our rare. Wits End. Uh, this card is just pretty much terrible. It's a 7 mana, you make someone discard their whole hand. Uh, in like any standard format, seven mana is way too much, and in EDH, making someone discard their hand is not that fun. So yeah. All right, got some more cards there. All right, picture of Lilian on the front. Hopefully, she's waiting for me inside too. Okay. Got a swamp here. Soldier. Oop. Stuffy doll. I revealed it too fast. Another reprint. This art is much more awesome than the original art though. And he's actually kind of fun and limited. Because uh, only black and white can really take care of him. Red just like sits there and cries. I guess you could always fly over him too, but... Alright, here are the other cards. Jace's Phantasm. I already put this guy into my Edric EDH deck. Simply because he's a 1-1 one, one flyer for 1 mana. With the potential to go big. Alright, about halfway through the middle column now. Alright, more blue cards in the front, of course. Yep, just a force in the back and a soldier token. And then for our rare slash mythic, Staff of Nin. Okay, uh, this is a new card, and it's a great card for a limited, because, I mean, you get to draw a card at the beginning of every upkeep, and you get to tap it to do one damage. But yeah, uh, otherwise outside of limited, kind of overcosted. But yeah, if you ever open Staff of Nin in your uh, sealed or draft pool, definitely a first pick. Do 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 do. Open up packs on a Sunday. All right, non-blue card in the front. Nice. All right, on, from the back we have. Just an island and an ad card. And then for the money, Faith's Reward. 
this is actually an interesting little card. Uh, not really a chase card, but can uh, you can do some weird weird tricks with this because you know it brings back everything that died this turn to the battlefield. You might see it in some sort of combo deck if you ever see it. Uh, here are the uncommons, quick flash. All right, next pack. Servant of Nephrox on the front. This guy's a fine dude unlimited. In the back, ooh, actually, <laughs> this is a foil Nephrox Overlord of Grixis. Usually, I'd be happy to get a foil rare, but unfortunately, this is also an intro pack foil rare. So, uh, much less exciting. But you know, it is what it is. And of course, we've got the Swamp and Ad card. Maybe an Ajani to make up for it? No, but we do have a Magma Quake. It's actually a pretty cool card. Um, it's an X Sweeper. And the interesting about th this card is um, you're able to kill multiple Planeswalkers with it. Like if your opponent is playing Super Friends and they have like three Planeswalkers out, you can cast this and kill all of them. Actually, a pretty cool card. Alright, Vancor. This is amazing. As is Tyron's Invocation Unlimited. Alright, so yeah, nothing too exciting so far, but as I said, you know, Corset 2013, low EV, but you know, I opened the box for you guys. <laughs> okay, we have a Foil Wild Guess, you know, more uh, red card draw that Wizards is trying to push. And we've got a Mountain and an Ad Card, oh wait, is this a Red Rare? It is, it's Fervor, all creatures you control have haste. Eh, fun little card. And here are a Flash of the Uncommons. All right, just a few packs left in the middle column. Go ahead and open this baby up. And in the back we have planes and soldier. Oop! Oh, I revealed a rare and it's a clone. Clone's pretty awesome. Um, Phantasmal Image was a much better card in M12, but I think Wizards felt it was too powerful. So now we have the four mana version that sticks around. Still a pretty awesome card. I mean, it's been around for a while too. In here, forgot to flash you guys the uncommon real quick. All right, three more packs left in the middle column. Something spicy. We have forest, not so spicy. Add card, and then for our rare, it's gonna be predatory rampage. This card is basically the new overrun, so pretty nice and limited. Probably too overcosted to play outside of that. Here are the uncommons. Alright, on to the next one. Got a little distant tomb in the front. Wait for it to focus. Back card is just island. Ooh, goat token. Goats are awesome. And... Ooh, Nickel Bolas Planeswalker. <laughs> so our second Planeswalker of this box. Uh, Nickel Bolas is a reprint. And is actually the only multicolored card in Magic 2013. He's awesome if you can ever get him to play. Uh, I, I actually want to see him played in, be played in Limited one day. They did print his gem too, so... Very possible. And then for the uncommons in that pack, we got Acidic Slime, Crusade of Odric, and Rise from the Grave. Alright, this is the last pack in the middle column. Alright, Disentomb in the front, and in the back we have... Ooh, nice, a foil Acidic Slime. Acidic Slime's a pretty awesome card. It's been printed a lot of times, but... Having a foil one is always awesome. I actually got one as a FNM promo recently. So now I have an army of foil acidic slimes. And then for our rare card, Captain of the Watch. Another reprint and another great limited card. Put this guy into play, you have a veritable army. Ooh, another Nighthawk, nice. Alright. 
And now for the first pack in the last column on the right side. Naturalize in the front. Let's look for focus. Another foil planes. Wow, we have two foil planes this time around. Let me double check. Oh no, sorry. I did open up a foil planes in one of the sealed events, and that's probably where I remember it from. So there's the land and add card. You know, peak of this card, which is well, another dual land, a glacial fortress. Alright, and here are the uncommons. Yeah, not looking that exciting so far. We got a couple planeswalkers, but unfortunately they're the reprinted ones. Though I actually am missing Chandra from my collection. I think I have one of every other, all of the other M12 planeswalkers except for her. Alright, we got an island and a goblin token. A Johnny, yeah, yeah, nope, Shimmy Inspector. This guy is a decent card in Limited, but probably the only place you'll ever see him. Then we got these as the Uncommons. Yeah, this bo booster box is looking a lot like my Dark Ascension booster box opening. Uh, my AVR box was actually really good. I mean, if you guys saw that video, I had like seven Mythics, and pretty much all of them were good Mythics. Alright, what do we got here? Just an island, a token, and a peek at a green card. And that card is Silk Lash Spider. A really good card in Limited, but probably the only place you will ever see it. There are the Uncommons. Alright, next pack. I actually really like uh, this booster packaging. It's really slick. I like the like the black look and then just like uh, the artwork peeking out. I think Wizards is trying to go modern. All right, we got a mountain in the back, and for the rare we have <laughs> Door to Nothingness. I I want to pull this in limited so I can attempt to play it, but probably fail. So it's a fun card for uh, casual players. Wizards does cater to its casual audience. Alright, next up we have this pack. We've got a mine rot in the front. And then in the back, planes, add card. And for our rare we have dun 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 a Johnny Collar of the Pride. Nice. People were opening this guy like left and right at the pre-releases I went to, and now I have my own. Let's dance. He's going to do a happy dance for you guys. Woo. But yeah, this guy is pretty awesome. I mean, three mana and what's essentially five starting loyalty because, you know, you're gonna obviously just going to plus one him right away when he comes to play. Really hard to kill. And, you know, with the loss of Honor of the Pure in uh, the latest core set, might be a very essential part of uh, any white weenie strategy. But I'm super stoked. This is like... You know, it's the card I was looking for, basically. And uh, the new Liliana, of course, but... Alright. And accompanying our Johnny are a bunch of cards. But yeah, I mean, that basically made the box for me. <laughs> it's really the only card I super wanted. And so my spirits are much higher now. It's okay, we don't even have to open up anything else. Except maybe foil a Johnny? Nope, so well. And another goat. Alright, Unsummon is hiding Stormtide Leviathan. This guy, I got wrecked a game in pre-release with this guy. He put into play and I was playing a green and black and I had like no flyers. So I could only watch as this guy swung in for 8 unblockable every turn. Alright, here are the uncommons. Okay, we got the color of the pride. All right, Titanic Grove in the front, and in the back we got just a mountain and a soldier. And then for our next rare, it's Firewing Phoenix. 
Alright. This is actually a new card, I believe. 4-2 flying for 4 mana, and it you can recur it for 4 mana. Probably really good and limited. I've actually haven't seen it in play. But Alright, here are the uncommons. Yeah. So uh yeah, after we have a Johnny, I think the the only other thing I really want, I guess, is a Thunder Maw Hellkite. It's the 5-5 five, five Flying Dragon for 5. When it comes to the play, it deals 1 damage to all of your opponent's flyers and it taps them. It's a really efficient card and uh, people are rating it pretty highly, so I might want one. Got a forest here and a sapling token. Alright, and for the back we have... Nice! Audric Master Tactician. One of the new uh, legends. This guy is a decent 4 drop for white. We'll see if he makes it. And here are the uncommons. But speaking of good pools, uh, the owner of one of the local game shops I went to, he played in the sealed pool and he pulled Foil, Thunderball, Hellkite, and uh, Johnny. Uh, he's pretty good at magic. Alright, and we have an island. Oh. Peeking at this blue card, which is Master of the Pearl Trident. He is the new Merfolk Lord. People are really talking about him because uh, they see him being put into the Merfolk Legacy deck as a, you know, maybe a fifth or sixth Lord of Atlantis. It's pretty nice. So, uh, here are the uncommons. Alright, last of the uh, three packs in this booster box. Could use a new Liliana. New Liliana seems kind of slow. Not sure if it uh, will make any standard decks, but it will definitely make a lot of EDH decks, especially mono black EDH decks. Oh, is that a foil in the back? It is. A little foil dragon hatchling. Pretty nice art. All right, and then we have, of course, plain sapperling. And then for the rare, we have Void Stalker. Pretty interesting because it's uh, it's basically blue removal which blue doesn't get a lot of. A little bit expensive, but it's also a creature, so... I kind of want to try out that guy in Limited, see how he does. Haven't really seen anyone playing with him. Alright, last of the two packs. Go ahead and put this in the background. Maybe should have left it in the background anyway, for you guys to see, but... Destroy this pack, of course. In the back we have Swamp and Add Card. And for the rare, it's Battle of Wits. Another reprint, a uh, nice fun casual card. If you ever see someone walking around with a huge deck, this is probably what they're playing. Alright, those are the uncommons. Alright, and for the last booster of this box. As uh, always, I shall slow roll this. You guys get to watch it from beginning till end. Liliana's Shade, really nice limited card for uh, black players because you get to search up for a swamp. Harbor Serpent, seen many a reprint, but he's a decent five body for four, a six mana. We have Kindled Fury, Ranger's Path, Sign in Blood, which is definitely an awesome card. Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Fairy Invaders, another awesome limited card. Goblin Arsonist, Divine Verdict. Battleflight Eagle. Harbor Bandit, this guy is really good by the way. In a limited. Mark of Mutiny, and then for our rare we have... Oh wait, no. It's an uncommon, I was just kidding guys. Volcanic Geyser. And now for the rare we have... Black? Black? Ah. The Zathrit Gorgon. This was also the pre-release card. Uh, not yeah, good limited. Not so much other anywhere else. So yeah, that was our box. Let's go ahead and go over all of our rares again. So we have the Zathrit Gorgon, Battle of Wits, Void Stalker, Master of the Pearl Trident, Audric Master Tactician, Fire Winning Phoenix, Stormtide Leviathan. A Johnny, Collar of the Pride, he's the man. Door to Nothingness. 
Silk Lash Spider, Shimmy Inspector, Glacial Fortress, Captain Watch, Nicol Bolas, Planeswalker, Predatory Rampage, Clone, Fervor, Magma Quick, Face Reward, Staff of Nin, Stuffy Doll, Witsen, Chandra, the Firebrand, Omniscience, Intrepid Hero, Elvish Archdruid, Gilded Lotus, Reverberate, Drowned Catacomb, Vampire Nocturnus, Redirect, Cathedral of War, Boundless Realms, Ground Seal, Quirin Ride, and Dragon Skull Summit. Alright, so uh, yeah, that was our box opening. Zoom back out here. See all the pile of cards I've left on the table. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, new sets are always super exciting, and I'm pretty excited I got a Johnny. And yeah, look forward to my pre-release review video, which should be coming out Monday or Tuesday. And I'll see you guys next time.